and we're back. It is really hot outside. I got the truck here behind me. The reason being is we are going to go ahead and build this little platform. So what we have here, we got some wood. We got five pieces of plywood, one of which is cut. We got three for the bottom. We got two for the top. I'll show you how that's set up. You probably can't really tell in here either. You're not gonna be able to tell, but I have some uh, horse stall mat jammed back there that I picked up at the tractor supply store. So we're gonna go ahead and build our own little platform in here. Should be interesting. I also picked up some other odds and ends. Again, I'll always flash once I'm done with everything, how much everything costs. This wasn't too bad. It's a lot cheaper option than buying a platform yourself. My main problem is, is just kind of figuring out and making sure that it looks nice. That's one of the reasons I first went with a prefabricated platform. But as you guys have known, we're running into all kinds of issues and that continues on to Sornex. They can't come and deliver like they were supposed to today. In fact, they won't be able to come for another month just based off of my own schedule with the wedding and the honeymoon or whatever. So just like, you know what, between UPS, between Sornex, I'm just done. Just cancel it. I'll figure it out myself. So let's in fact see if I can figure it out myself. All right, so one of the things that I did because I want to save myself as much time as possible is I used these fractional plates that I got the other day. So I said I wasn't really sure if I was going to use them, and I've already used them, so they're putting themselves to good use. And I laid them out here. You see the red ones. You also see the black ones over here. I laid them out for where everything is going to be so I could visualize it. So the blue ones in the corner represent where the actual plywood's going to go underneath overall. So that's eight feet down to the black here, which is 12 feet. So eight by 12, it's gonna go back again another eight feet. And that's going to be where the platform is itself. Of course, there will be rubber stall mats on the side and plywood in the middle again as well, nicer plywood. You see the red and the white there, that is where the rack is going to be. So it's gonna be probably a pretty big rack, again, because it has integrated um, plate storage as well. So that's gonna make it a little bit deeper. So that's an idea of where it's gonna be. So you're gonna have roughly, I think it ends up being like, close to six feet as far as the depth of the rack then you'll have another six feet or so before you get to the end of the platform so that way if you want to bench here actually the bench is in probably a pretty good spot if you wanted to bench the front of the rack or more towards the back you still have plenty of room not to mention you can deadlift here as well and I think that's where we're going to do it some of the concessions I need to make number one is that light because as of right now where that red fractional plate is it's like right in line with the light, which isn't going to be good because the rack's probably going to hit it there. So I have a couple of options of what I can do. Number one would be to move the rack and the whole rig to the left a little bit, as you see right there by the blue. I probably have a good foot or so before I get to the wall. My only main concern is, is that if I'm standing here against the end of the rack, am I going to be able to have enough space to change the plates? And right here in this case, I probably would. But again, it's going to have to come towards me a couple more inches, so that might be a problem. I could also potentially move everything to the right some, but the problem then will be is that's going to be more than likely, again, pretty close to where the light is. So I don't know if I want the light in the rack. And of course, I could probably just move the rack whole thing somewhere else, move some of this other crap in the basement around. So a lot of free space right now. We still have to put a lot of stuff in the shed and whatnot. But the idea for this basement overall is going to be to be functional. So we want to put a bedroom down here, a living room, a bathroom. Bathroom's going to go over here. There's the shower. There's the sink. And then the toilet's under this deer netting that we have. So the plumbing is all there already. Uh, but that being said, I don't want to have the gym in the middle. And that way it's going to cut back on everything. So I want to tuck this away in the corner. So I'm gonna to try to figure out a way to put this in, but just so you guys know, that's my reasoning behind it. Also, that being said, I am lazy as shit. And one of the things I did is I pulled the truck up right here because I did not want to walk from the front of the house to the back just by myself carrying all that wood as well as those horse stall mats because they are fucking heavy and that's the horse stall mats I'm talking about. You also get to see part of my backyard there. So let's get to it. Ladder balls. All right, so the first layer is down. And what I did is I ended up moving it to the right some. That way the lights kind of kind of be just in the middle. So because the ceilings are pretty low as is, like seven and a half feet, that dare reach though, uh, I'll probably put this somewhere in the middle uh, of where the rack's going to be, I'm assuming, only because I'm probably not going to want it right against the wall. I don't know just yet, but we'll figure it out that way to deal with the light. I figured that would be the easiest. Plus, because I'm a little bit 
OCD, just having everything centered, it's gonna be a little bit easier. So here's the first layer. Again, three eight by four pieces of particle board. These are a little bit bowed, so when you pay for the cheaper ones, which is fine on the bottom, one of the downsides is, is they're not all the way flat. However, there's gonna be stuff on top of this, uh, both the nicer board over there, I think that's pine, as well as some of the horse stall mat to weigh it down. So that should be okay, hopefully. So I got this first nicer piece of wood overlaid now, and I'm also going to have to put a four x four piece, which we have over there. So I got, like I said, two of these nicer boards, cut this one in half. And the reason I'm doing this particular layout, first of all, I did have to measure to make sure it's two feet on each side. I will be um, screwing these together instead of gluing, just in the aspect that I have to move this, it's gonna be more portable rather than glue stuff down or change the wood over time. It just makes things easier. Um, but, so with this, you saw the one across the top and then the two side by side here as far as the underboards go. The reason I did it this way is because with the stuff that's going on top, I also wanted to make this as secure as possible. So when I bolt this top board down, what it's going to do is gonna connect this top bottom board and this bottom board to this side of the top board. So that will be secure. So the three underneath pieces will be connected, not to mention the top piece will be connected to that. And when I do this side, you have the top connected to the bottom as well. So that kind of secures everything from here. And then what I'll do is I'll put that other four by four piece here to connect these two together, which will be nice. And when I cut the horse stall mats, which you'll see in a second, I gotta bring this out of the car, it's a pain in the ass. They're four by six pieces of horse stall mats. So what that's going to do is I'll cut them in half and that'll give me two strips of two by six. And that just happens to be two feet and this whole thing happens to be 12 feet. So I'll cut them in half and I'll use one piece here basically to there. And when I do that and secure it, it's gonna secure these pieces as well. Same thing over there. So two horse stall mats are needed. So I'm gonna to get to work doing this. I'll lay out the other pine and I'll probably actually bolt that in place before I do anything else with the horse stall mats to make sure there's no sliding If you're ever looking around. to do a cardio workout, I don't like the bike or the treadmill or running outside, buy yourself some horse stall mats and carry them around in 90 degree heat by yourself. Not a fun time. Look at this, I'm out of breath. Getting old. In before already old. All right, so one half of the matting is down. I need to clean that. A little dusty and a little sweaty as you can probably tell, but instead of just measuring these and cutting them, what I figured I'd do is since this center platform is in the middle already, there's two feet on each side. What I do, and it actually makes cutting it easier, is I'm laying these mats down Thus you have the two feet there and you also have it raised up a bit so you're not cutting the floor and you can cut all the way through. I do have a T-bar or a T-square ruler here as well. This thing was only like 10 bucks. So all I need to do is just make sure that that's lined up in the right spot. And that does look good from where I am. You guys might disagree. And then I just have right here a heavy duty box cutter and I'll just cut along both sides. And then like I said, you just split them up. So I'm gonna do the second one now. This isn't as bad as I thought. From watching a lot of videos online, a lot of people said this was the hardest part was cutting these. It actually isn't bad as long as you have a good knife and this is a pretty good setup in my opinion as the way to cut it. So let's go ahead and All get right, this so done. everything is done. I got the other side cut and installed. So that is the final platform. Again, it's eight by 12, fairly large when you consider it. Uh, again, the rack is going to take up a good amount of space, um, probably about, uh, I don't know, maybe about a third, if not a little bit more, probably about, right about here. Uh, I may or may not have it all the way up against the wall, but still, you'll have enough room to bench. You'll have enough room for this extra piece. Uh, would just be really much predominantly for deadlifting. So plenty of space here, similar to what I train in now. And also similar to what I train in at Sports Performance, you guys are probably used to it. They have a big logo right here in the middle. I think I'm gonna look into ways of getting some kind of decal for the wood. So wood adhesive decal and then maybe epoxy the whole thing. So I'll probably wait before I actually screw all of this down. I might also stain the wood. I don't know, I kind of like the lighter wood here. Uh, as far as the screws go, I'll just be using some of these construction screws with a flat head. Um, and I'll probably be doing these every 12 inches just to make sure that we get a uh, good bolt on action. You guys always want that good bolt on action. But we'll go around the perimeter as well as around the edges here as well as on the wood. Uh, but the nice thing again about bolting these down as far as with screws go is if I ever change my mind or want to move it, I can just undo the screws and this all comes apart pretty easily. And again, I'm not gluing anything together. So we'll put these in after we figure out what we're going to do with this. Overall, when it's all said and done, 
When you consider that this morning, I didn't have any of this equipment as far as the material goes. I went out to Home Depot and the tractor supply store and got all of them. Cost under grand total, uh, I think it cost about $260. I'll, throw, I'll show you my receipts just so you see. I did have to buy some of this extra stuff like this uh, T-square, as well as the screws, uh, maybe some other odds and ends that I'll show you as well. Uh, but for the wood and the stall mats themselves, again, under 300 bucks, whereas a customized prefabricated one would have been very expensive, probably in the $1,000, $1,200 range. Uh, so this is good for what it is. And again, as far as the thickness goes, it's about an inch and a half. So that's why those screws I showed you were an inch and a quarter. That way I don't go too far into the ground, but it will still penetrate all layers here. One of the things I'm going to have to do and take into consideration also when I order that rack is the fact that now my 90-inch ceilings, which aren't very high to begin with as far as most racks go, I'm now losing another inch and a half. But I wasn't really planning on doing any overhead pressing in here. I know I got a lot of questions about that. Uh, so as far as shoulder work goes, uh, I'll probably really limit that to seated military press or if I really have to, I'll just go outside there and do some stuff, but I'm not too concerned. One of the things I've also been thinking about doing is picking up some kettlebells and doing some one-arm presses because that would still, I believe, allow me to get up there. Lucky for me that that no range of motion, bad mobility is actually helping me out some here uh, in terms of doing shoulder pressing movements in here. So. All things considered, not too bad. So I'll flash the receipts on screen just so you can see the actual cost. I know a lot of you guys are interested in that. And again, once I finish everything and get all the equipment in, which who the hell knows when that's going to be, I'll do an overall cost analysis of everything I got and if it was worth it and or maybe some alternatives that you can do if you want to save money or maybe go a step up or so. So in the meantime, as always, thanks for watching and stay big.